Ah, bananas. The tasty fruit that's loved by all. It's great with breakfast, lunch, after a workout, even for dessert. It's packed full of vitamin B6, vitamin C, manganese, fiber, potassium, the list goes on and on. Between the years 2000 and 2017, global production of bananas grew at a compound annual rate of 3.2%, reaching a record of 114 million tons in 2017. More than 100 billion bananas are consumed annually, and as of 2021, has made 1.3 billion dollars globally however this tasty treat has a dark history that comes at a cost for all of us to enjoy so today we're going to be talking about the good the bad and the ugly of bananas and the most powerful company behind them by the name of united fruit company the United Fruit Company was an American company known today as Chiquita Brands International, was founded in 1899 and became a major force in the economics of many Central American countries, where it owned large tracts of land and controlled transportation and other infrastructure. In the early 20th century, the United Fruit Company controlled up to 80% of the banana trade in the United States and Europe, and at its peak in mid 20th century, the United Fruit Company owned or controlled over 1.5 million acres of land in Central and South America and employed over 100,000 people. So, how exactly did they gain so much control, power over Latin America and the banana industry? One major factor in gaining so much control was acquiring a lot of land in Central and South America. This allowed them to control the whole process from planting to shipment. In many cases, the company would buy up large tracts of land from small-scale farmers or indigenous communities at prices that were far below market value. These deals were often made under pressure with the company using its political and economic influence to create an environment where local farmers and communities had few alternative options. In other cases, the United Fruit Company would lease land from the governments or receive land concessions in exchange for providing economic benefits or political support. The company was known for its close relationships with political elites in these countries where it operated and has often used its political influence to secure favorable business conditions and land deals. The UFCO did sometimes promote development in these nations that they worked in, but its long-term effects on these countries and economic effects were often devastating in Central America. The company built extensive railroads and ports, provided employment and transportation, and created numerous schools for the people who lived and worked on the company land. But on the other hand, it allowed vast tracts of land under its ownership to remain uncultivated, and in Guatemala in particular, it discouraged the government from building highways and roads because it would lessen the profitable transportation monopoly that the railroads that they had under control. The company also used its financial resources to shape public opinion and promote its own interests. It owned a number of newspapers, magazines and other media outlets in the countries where it operated, which was then used to promote a positive image of the company and its activities. It also would consistently sponsor cultural events and provided funding for public infrastructure projects such as schools and hospitals and roads. Now, like most these big industries that require a high labor force, especially that benefit the West, of course, the working conditions in this with this particular company were not any better. One of the most common forms of mistreatment was the low wages that they paid to their workers. The United Fruit Company workers were often paid poverty level wages that were insufficient to support their own families. And in some cases, workers were paid with company scrip, which was also can be used to purchase goods from company owned stores effectively trying to get workers to basically not be able to leave because they can't get any better wages or working conditions elsewhere and it's insane to think that they would pay them with their own currency effectively and that you could only use this currency to purchase the company's own products so basically the profits would always come in the united fruit company was also criticized of course for its poor working conditions and you know workers were often forced to work these long hours in difficult and dangerous conditions which included exposure to pesticides and other hazardous chemicals the company was slow to a Adopt basic safety measures such as providing protective equipment and workers were often injured or killed while working on the job they also of course like all these big companies have a history of suppressing labor unions and worker protests and in some cases the company has used violence and intimidation to break up labor strikes and prevent workers from organizing or unionizing the company also has close ties to local governments and security forces which were often used to suppress worker protests and maintain the company's control over labor relations now, of course, as you can imagine, with all this 
horrific work labor conditions that these guys were put through there is bound to be protests and unfortunately some would meet with violence and death and the most famous one became known as the banana massacre the banana massacre which was also known as the Seneca massacre was a violent confrontation between the workers and the united fruit company in colombia in december 1928 this incident took place in the town of Sinaga when the Colombian army troops allegedly under the command of General Cortes Vargas opened fire on a crowd of strikers resulting in the deaths of between an estimated 47 and up to 2,000 people depending on the source and estimates you find. Originally the USA had also threatened to send their own military in if it had not been sorted which put pressure on the Colombian government to come in and basically kill these people. The workers who were mostly indigenous people and Afro-Colombians were demanding better working conditions and higher wages from the UFCO, which controlled much of the region's banana production. The exact details of what happened are still kind of disputed depending on the source that I could find, but it's believed that the military fired indiscriminately into the crowds of protesters, killing and injuring many people. Some accounts also suggest that the soldiers engaged in acts of brutality and rape against the workers. The banana massacre had significant repercussions both in Colombia and internationally and it helped to galvanize support for workers rights and labor movements in the region. The incident was also a major embarrassment for the United States government which was seen as supporting the interest of the United Fruit Company over the Colombian people. And that ties us nicely into the CIA's involvement with the UFCO. One example I would like to give was in 1954 when the Guatemalan government of Colonel Arbenz was toppled by forces led by a Colonel Armas who invaded from Honduras. This particular coup was commissioned by the Eisenhower administration and the military operation was armed, trained and organized by, believe it or not, the CIA. The directors of the UFCO actually lobbied to convince the Truman and Eisenhower administration that the colonel Arbenz intended to align Guatemala with the Eastern Bloc. Besides the disputed issue that Arbenz had alliance to communism, the biggest issue for the UFCO about this was Arbenz government's reform legislation and new labor code. The UFCO was the largest Guatemalan landowner and employer and the Arbenz government land before basically wanted to take 40% of UFCO's purchased land. Now the US officials had little proof to black their claims of a growing communist threat in Guatemala, but the relationship between the Eisenhower administration and the UFCO demonstrated the influence of corporate interest and US foreign policy. So because the UFCO were basically going to lose land, meaning their profits were going to diminish, they lobbied the American government to come in and stage a coup and put this other right-wing dictator in charge just so the land would not be taken and they could continue to make money. The other thing that's very interesting is during this time period there was a number of people that worked in the government that were connected directly to the UFCO. So for example the Secretary of State John Foster Dulles who was an avid opponent of communism. He was also a member of the law firm Sullivan and Cromwell which represented the United Fruit Company. His brother Alan Duns who was the director of the CIA at the time was a board member of the United Fruit Company. Another thing is that the Assistant Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs John Cobot had also been president of the United Fruit Company. So many individuals who directly influenced US policy towards Guatemala in the 1950s had direct ties to the UFCO. Now after the overthrow of Arbenz, a military dictatorship was established under Armas who I mentioned earlier. Now soon after coming into power, the new government launched a concerted campaign against trade unionists which again benefited the UFCO. Now, despite the UFCO's government connections and conflicts of interest, the overthrow of our bands failed to actually benefit the company in the end, and its stock value actually started to decline, as well as its profit margins, and the Eisenhower administration proceeded with an antitrust action actually against the company, which forced it to divest in 1958. During the 1990s and the early 2000s, the AUC controlled large areas of Colombia's banana growing regions and demanded payments from companies operating in those areas, including Chiquita Brands, which was formerly known as United Fruit Company. Chiquita eventually admitted to making payments to the AUC as well as other paramilitary and guerrilla groups as a form of protection money to ensure their land and operations run smoothly. But in 2007, Chiquita agreed to pay a $25 million fine to the United States of Justice as part of a settlement related to the payments. So it's fair to say that the UFCO 
is as corrupt as they come like like any of these big corporations uh, over the years the political ties of the united fruit company has been heavily criticized contributing to corruption inequality environmental degradation in the countries where they operated and the legacy of worker exploitation has continued to impact communities in the region to this day and many workers and their families continue to struggle with low wages poor working conditions and limited opportunities for social mobility the legacy of the united fruit company continues to be felt in central america and other regions where the company operated many scholars and activists see the company as a symbol of the negative impacts of corporate power and globalization so today chiquita brand international is one of the largest producers and distributors of bananas as well as other fruit and vegetables the company operates in a number of countries in latin america and other regions and has faced criticism for its labor practices environmental impacts and other issues similar to those plagued by the united fruit company in their past chiquita has taken steps to address some of these criticism in recent years such as adopting more sustainable farming and practices and implementing worker programs that help protect the workers however the company continues to face challenges in balancing its business interests and the needs of workers communities and the environment so like any big corporation they will will always be willing to put money before anything and if it means that these workers are underpaid if it means they're working horrible hours if it means they're working under uh, hazardous conditions if it saves them money and makes them more money they will continue to do it because these companies can never ever ever just like with the avocado i mentioned in the last video they don't care they don't care all they care about is money all that matters is profits 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 and no matter how much profits they make it's not enough and they will continue to exploit and it's crazy to see like i learned a lot researching for this video it's crazy to see the cia's involvement the american government's involvement as always guys thanks so much for watching it's always appreciated now you might know as my voice is gone i've been sick for like the last week and a half and still clinging on to me so apologies if my words don't come out as clear as they usually do um, but thanks so much for watching thanks for sharing and liking and subscribing i uh, will uh, hope that you will continue to do so and i hope that you learned something new and um if this is your first time watching welcome i hope you enjoyed my banana video and you know i made one about avocados the last time you should watch that one as well because it's just as interesting and dark you know um but that's it for me guys thanks so much for watching i will see you guys in the next video peace out